Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306, back with another video as I knock a bunch of stuff over on the side. Anyway, um, I was on eBay and I found this guy for something like a dollar or something, maybe two dollars. And I always wanted to know kind of what was inside one of these meters. And basically you just put 12 volts on the input, there are only two wires, there's a, a coil in there. And it'll count up every time it receives a pulse. Um, and it only counts in one direction, and this is meant... We're just uh, counting some kind of event. This would be good for, um, well, pretty much any automated process where you want to count, you know, the number of events where it's just a, it receives a pulse. So anyway, uh, let's just give this guy a, a pop open and see what's inside. There's uh, two tabs here um, on the side, so it looks like I'm gonna kind of need to get in there with some kind of pocket knife or something and pry. Just. Put a guitar pick in that side and see if we can lever this. There we go. And yeah, it's interesting. There's just a uh, screw terminal in the back um, just for mounting. And yeah, you can see the big coil in there. It runs off 12 volts. There's a little window and it's a, supposed to be panel mount so there's these little flanges that snap in um, <clears throat> other than that yeah uh, you can see kind of the mechanism here um, basically wheels with zero through nine digits on them and there's these uh, little cogs in the back that uh, once it goes um, from nine and rolls back over to zero it'll actually rotate that one notch which then rotates this next gear over and increments it by one and it does that for every digit and I believe on the label here uh, kind of hard to see but you can see here that it says uh, 12 volts DC and 18 counts per second so that's the fastest you can toggle it uh, so I was thinking this would be really cool to make some kind of clock out of um, but the issue is if I have seconds, minutes, hours, to change it an hour, um, it wouldn't be so bad if it's just incrementing up until, you know, 59 and then it rolls over. Uh, that rollover, though, is kind of the gotcha because time goes from, you know, uh, on the tens place, 0 to 5, and then it has to roll over to 0, which means it has to go from 5 to nine and then to zero so you're gonna have to pulse a coil a lot to increment between every like uh, minute to hour interface and in order to change one of these upper digits you have to go through a lot of iterations of these lower digits here so it'll probably not work out so great you'd have to sit there um, every hour it would take like five or ten minutes for it to catch up with the time which kind of defeats the purpose of a clock uh, but maybe I can use these wheels for something like that. But anyway, we can see the mechanism here. Here's a coil when you pulse it. Um, there's a little arm in here with a, ma I believe that's a magnet on there. Let's see if I can, it's kind of hard to tell. Anyway, uh, you can see when I push that up, um, it increments. Come on. There we go. It increments. And so basically when you energize a coil, it creates a magnetic field and it, it actually uh, pulls that lever arm closer to the center. And so interesting thing is um, the polarity on these wires actually don't matter. Uh, so you can actually pulse it either positive or negative. It just has to be DC. Um, if you were to hit this with AC, not exactly sure what would happen. Um, I guess it would depend on the duty, um, but you could probably actually get it to just count upwards indefinitely. Anyway, you could see here, I can use my finger to to either increment it. Actually, I went all the way backwards. Or you can actually decrement it as well, I would believe. Anyway, it's sort of latched in such a way that it's supposed to only go in one direction. We can see it roll over here. Yeah. Kind of fun to play with. 
Yeah, so you actually can, it's sort of um, geared in such a way that you can manually roll it backwards by hand. So it's at like 30 something now. Let me just fix exposure so it doesn't keep doing that. There you go, and it rolls back over to 9999 once you hit below uh, zero. And I can pulse it. And then all the digits, all the digits are actually kind of a little loose. Um, but I guess it's not a problem if it's inside the case. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to see about taking this down a little bit more so I can see the individual digits. And I want to see the gearing on the side, how that, that works. There should be a single notch around the nine, between the nine and the zero point to allow the rollover. Let's see. Lift it out, okay, that works. So yeah, the plastic's a little spring, you can kind of remove it. And yeah, these are all the wheels you can see. On this side, there's just a lot of different teeth and that's for um, being driven. Ah, that's interesting, okay. So, as I drop everything, um, if you are to look in here, there's um, the arm that ratchets up and down. This actually looks very similar to the mechanism um, that clocks use. Um, it's sort of the two fingers that go up and down, and when it goes up, it pushes one way. When it goes down, it, it kind of creates like a ratcheting uh, mechanism that can push a gear in one direction which is exactly what you need here. And on these guys, we can see... Okay, so that's one of the end gears. Let me grab the first gear. Yeah, so the first gear is different. It has uh, these little teeth for that the finger ratcheting mechanism. And you can see opposite of the nine and zero point, there's a divot. Sorry about that. There is a divot right here um, between five and six, but that just happens to be there. Um, and it's opposite of nine and zero. So that'll face, um, kind of this gear upwards when it's at that point, you can kind of see the angle and that'll actually push, um, the gear over, which will then drive the outer ring of the next digit and increment that by one. And likewise, between five and six, that also has that same divot to drive the next gear in line. Um, so it's sort of sequential. It's a very simple mechanical um, method of achieving this. It's uh, really cool. So yeah, um, and these are just, as far as I can tell, they're just gears, which um, every other tooth is uh, elongated in order to, to catch on that little divot on the side of the gear there. It's fascinating. So you, you could actually um, buy two of these and chain them together, basically, to get more and more digits if you just elongate the mechanism. So yeah, that's really cool, actually. Um, I might actually see about, maybe not seconds, but turning this into a little tiny clock and um, only having hours and minutes, um, that way your rollover won't be so bad. Um, and then I can just drive it with a microcontroller that just pulses it once a minute, uh, which would be pretty trivial to do, actually. But anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this 